This week on Christian World News, the coronavirus breaks out, spreading into Europe. Now every, nearly every continent will tell you how you can protect yourself and how to keep the faith in a crisis. Plus, President Trump in India, what did Prime Minister tell him about religious freedom? Will it stop the persecution of Christians there? And love in a conflict zone. These people refuse to leave their war-battered villages in eastern Ukraine. Meet the Christian group that's telling them, you are not forgotten. Welcome to Christian World News, everyone. I'm Wendy Griffith. And I'm George Thomas. In just a few weeks, the coronavirus has spread to every continent except Antarctica, the highest number of cases in Asian nations, particularly China, the epicenter of the outbreak. However, it is now spreading into the Middle East and Europe. Iran and Italy, by the way, seeing the most number of cases in those two regions. Other parts of Europe, Australia and North America, also seeing new cases. But overall, those numbers are low. low. And in Africa, South America and other countries, the numbers are below double digits. In Italy, 12 villages are under quarantine and Saudi Arabia is suspending an annual pilgrimage drawing millions of Muslim pilgrims to holy cities of Mecca and Medina every year. One official with the World Health Organization praised Saudi Arabia and said the world is scrambling to stay ahead of the virus. I would say that there's a, a general recognition that globally we're not ready for the big outbreaks and we're really playing catch up right now. We're really trying to accelerate our, um, our preparedness. Here in the United States, President Trump is ramping up response, putting Vice President Mike Pence in charge of the effort. In the days ahead, we're going to make sure that the full resources of the federal government continue to be brought to bear uh, in confronting uh, the coronavirus here at home. California is seeing the most new cases in the United States. Governor Gavin Newsom says the state is critically low on testing kits. And a whistleblower at the Department of Health and Human Services says employees who processed Americans evacuated from virus hotspots did not have proper medical training or protective gear. President Trump is working with Congress to secure at least $2.5 billion to give medical professionals the training and equipment they need. Health officials say the overall risk to the American public remains low. CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson joins us now. Lori, so the global virus is causing concern, as you can imagine. Should people be concerned? Well, as Wendy just said, the risk is still low mm -hmm. in most places, and we need to be very careful with these numbers to differentiate the number of cases versus the number of deaths. Yeah. This can be, in very many cases, most cases, in fact, a very mild disease. In fact, 80% of people who contract COVID-19 have symptoms that are so mild they do not require hospitalizations. Also, about 99 not to 98 people out of 100 mm -hmm. recover from it. So we saw the death toll in China was about 2%. So far, we're seeing the death toll outside of China lower than that at about 1.5%. Yeah, and it is important to make that note that uh, the majority of people who do get it, they do recover at some point. Uh, I'm curious, who is at most risk? Uh, for COVID-19? Well, the, we're, the, the scientists have analyzed the first 72,000 72, cases, mm -hmm. and they have seen that no children under the age of nine have died from this. Very That's few children. news. It, it, excellent yeah, news, because yeah. kids usually are the ones who get the viruses, exactly. and only a small, tiny fraction of a percentage of people under age 20 even get it. Most people who get the, the virus are over age 50, most people who die from it are over age 70 mm. and have other health problems, lung problems like COPD or heart problems. Yeah. So it is definitely an auto an immune system issue. Yeah, real quickly, last few seconds, how can people protect themselves from this? Well, as I just said, boost your immune system. So uh, we've talked about that eating right, getting plenty of rest. Also, hand washing is the number one most important thing because we can pick up the virus on heart surfaces so we need to keep our hands clean don't touch your face yeah. if at all possible okay terrific i was going to give you a handshake but i think i won't you might want to <laughs> avoid the handshake right. that, 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 now you're thinking like a germaphobe good for you laurie as always thank you so much my pleasure wendy 
as someone who was quarantined for Ebola. That's right, exactly. All right, well, he didn't have it. Okay. Well, fears about the virus are sending shockwaves through global economic markets. The U.S. stock market seeing huge drops on successive days this week as top Wall Street firms warn about the impact of the virus on businesses and earnings. Financial expert Dan Celia tells CBN News while the short-term market looks bad, investors looking long-term should not be fearful. My advice is don't change anything. Please, please do not get caught up in the fear of what might happen, or for that matter, the fear of what is happening to your portfolios, your investments, your 401ks, your IRAs. Don't get caught up in fear. That's great advice, whether it's over finances or health. Joining us now to talk about how to keep that perspective is my co-host of CBN's Pearlink program. She's also an ordained minister. Charlene, welcome to the show. Hi, Wendy. Well, how can believers help those dealing with fear? We've got to take the advice that Dan just said, fear not. We've got to encourage other believers to keep the eternal perspective that God is in control. Our source, our help, our strength come from God. We need to encourage one another, witness to each other that God is in control. Hey, God has given us peace. He has not given us the spirit of fear. So let's encourage one another to keep the focus on God, that he is in control. How should we be praying right now for ourselves and for others? Absolutely. First of all, pray against the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. And also, I've been encouraged to pray Psalm 91, specifically verses 5 and 6. It says, you will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence, which is deadly plagues, deadly sicknesses that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. So pray, pray the word of God, pray against the spirit of fear. Love that. Thanks, Charlene. Well, would you mind praying for, for us now? There's a lot of people that are fearful and, of course, praying for those who have been afflicted by the coronavirus. Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us access to the very throne of heaven. And so we come boldly to your throne today. Father, when people are afraid about their health, they're afraid about their finances. But, Lord, you have told us, Lord God, to trust in you Lord, to not fear, Lord God, because you are the source of our help. You are our strength. You are our peace. Lord, not our financial portfolios, Lord God, not our finances, Lord, but you are our treasure. You are our source, Lord. And so we thank you for meeting the needs and keeping people away from fear. And we pray for those who've been afflicted. We pray for your mercy, oh God. We pray for healing. We pray for protection. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Prayer is powerful, as you know. Charlene, great to see you. Thanks so much for that powerful prayer and for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Coming up, President Trump has made religious freedom a priority. So did he speak up for India's persecuted Christians on his recent trip there? Find out right after this. He founded one of the world's largest television ministries. Welcome, folks, to the 700 Club. Formed a global relief organization demonstrating God's love in action. Thank you for helping us. Established a leading university. Graduates, flip your tassels. And became a New York Times best-selling author. Now, Pat Robertson wants to share with you significant insights learned from a lifetime in the Word of God. In his latest book, 10 Laws for Success, Keys to Win in Work, Family, and Finance, you'll discover the laws that govern success and how they can work for you. A real-world guidebook that can revolutionize your life. Call now, 1-800-700-7000, or go to CBN.com to receive Pat Robertson's latest book, 10 Laws for Success. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. 
as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the event shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 9.30 on the CBN News Channel. And welcome back to Christian World News. President Trump addressed religious freedom issues in a recent two-day visit to India. He and the First Lady were the guests of honor at a state banquet held at the presidential palace in New Delhi. India's president said Trump's visit had opened a new chapter in U.S.-India ties. Trump also met with India's controversial Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The two leaders have uh, developed a close relationship in the last few years. Religious freedom is a big concern in India, primarily because Modi's Hindu Nationalist Party is, they are putting pressure on religious minorities. On CBN's Faith Nation, Frank Gaffney of the group Save the Persecuted Christian said, the atmosphere in India is dangerous for Christians. I think it's dangerous now, and it seems likely to become more dangerous, unfortunately, because... Uh, the Prime Minister's Hindu nationalist parties uh, that support him and helped him become, uh, again, just recently, uh, the reelected re -elected leader of the world's largest democracy, um, are very intent on essentially Hinduizing, if I can use that expression, the nation of India, in which there are something on the order of 100 million Christians and a very large number of Muslims as well as other minority faiths. And the trouble is that the people at least driving the agenda of those parties, and presumably it's with at least the acquiescence of Prime Minister Modi, if not his overt support, seek to make those minorities either Hindus or absent, driving them literally out of the country. Prior to the trip, Gaffney sent uh, a letter to President Trump asking him to address religious freedom with the prime minister at a news conference following the visit. The president said they did discuss the issue. Take a listen. And I will say that the prime minister was incredible on what he told me. He wants people to have religious freedom and very strongly. And he said that in India, India they, have, uh, they have worked very hard to have great and open religious freedom. The president has made religious freedom a priority of his administration. Former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak died this week. Mubarak ruled Egypt as a strong man for 30 years. Under his tenure, Christians suffered state-sanctioned persecution. In 2011, a popular revolution forced him to resign from office. That led to the election of Mohamed Morsi, the leader of Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood. Morsi appointed other hardline Islamists to high positions in the government, and Islamic radicals stepped up their persecution of the church. In 2013, Egypt's military, led by Defense Minister General Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, forced Morsi from power. Al-Sisi was later elected president and leads Egypt to this day. We spoke with Egyptian-born pastor and author Dr. Michael Youssef about Al-Sisi's attitude towards the church in Egypt. And I'm telling you, this man truly has done what no president ever done. He goes to the cathedral every Christmas and every Easter to greet the Christians. He has appointed governors. Never in the past have been governor, Christian governors appointed anywhere in the country. Now. We have two Christian governors. Truly, I believe that he, that God raised him up as a direct answer to the prayer of the Christian believers who packed the churches 24-7 under the rule of the Muslim Brotherhood who were burning and killing and doing all kinds of terrible things to churches and Christians. So God raised him up as a direct answer to the prayer of the believers in, in Egypt and elsewhere. Dr. Yusuf and other evangelical leaders have met with President el-Sisi several times. Still ahead, on the front lines of a forgotten war, how one ministry is taking care of the remnant still living in the deserted towns of eastern Ukraine. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. 
Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Improve personal finances, maintain a lasting marriage, and achieve success in all you do. With Pat Robertson's dynamic new book, 10 Laws for Success, Keys to Win in Work, Family, and Finance. These supernatural laws of the universe will help you to overcome life's challenges and to accomplish your goals. Transform yourself and revolutionize your life now with Pat Robertson's 10 Laws for Success. Call now or visit CBN.com. The battle between Russia-backed fighters and Ukraine's army still rages despite a ceasefire signed five years ago. The war continues to rage in those, for those living on the front lines. Uh, not too long ago, I traveled to the war zone to report on peace efforts in eastern Ukraine and a ministry that is caring for those left behind. This is what's left of houses near the frontline town of Zolote. By midday Tuesday, February 18th, 2,300 explosions rocked the area as Ukrainian troops and Russian-backed separatist forces clashed in some of their fiercest fighting. Alexander Kornev was in his house when the first series of explosions went off. I had just turned around and then there was a boom. I was thrown back to the steps. I was lying down for 20 minutes. Ukraine said Russian fighters attempted to advance across the separatist line into Zolote, but were repelled. We have a powerful army. Provocations happen. The army responded firmly. CBN News journeyed 90 miles south from Zolote to another battle-scarred village. Numerous Ukrainian checkpoints meant we were getting close to the front lines. <laughs> Traveling with us, Sergei Rakuba, who grew up in this region of Ukraine. We're in the village of Opetna, which was a vibrant, uh, dynamic uh, community before the war started between Russia and Ukraine. And the front line is basically separating this village in half. Rakuba, joined by a team from the Mennonite Brethren Church, delivered food, water and other essentials to families and soldiers living in Opetnaya. February 2014, Russian so-called separatists launched a massive hybrid war into this part of eastern Ukraine, in essence taking a chunk of the country. Six years later, communities like this one are a ghost town, except for a few families who have lived here for most of their lives and who vow never to leave. Once home to 700 people, only 60 now live in Opatnaya. There's been no electricity, gas or running water for more than five years. The streets here lined with bullet-scarred homes. The majority of houses unlivable. But we know that even here, God is here. And uh, people need to know, know the hope of God, that he brings the salvation. And so, it's, again, a special privilege to be able to pass out gifts, hand out food, and pray with people, and just share the love of Christ. Rakuba and Weeby climbed the steps of a bombed-out apartment building carrying supplies. We have no light for the last five years. Come on in, guys. The 78-year-old Lida, she lives in this tiny room with her son and four cats. No heat, no water, very little food. But there is no place to go for me. 
Куда? There is nobody, you know, I can go to. И там, где наши живут, точно ж такое. Чего yeah. туда ехать? And I'm just, I'm, Я I'm тут уже 50 here. лет. I'm just waiting. I lived here for 50 years, <laughs> and I will stay here. Pro-Russian rebels control half her village and much of eastern Ukraine, including key cities of Donetsk and Luhansk. They still uh, here shooting, you know, farther there. At least once a day, once every two days, they still here shooting. 14,000 people lost their lives in this region, half since Russia and Ukraine signed an agreement to end the war five years ago. 30,000 have been wounded and nearly 2 million people displaced from their homes. Rokuba says it's a forgotten war and it weighs on him. My teenage years and youth were spent here in the towns of eastern Ukraine. I remember how difficult it was for a Christian at that time to share one's faith and in general for the church to be of influence in Soviet society. The war over the past few years has added even more darkness. So why don't we pray? We'll pray in Russian, if you don't mind. Rakuba, a native of Ukraine, now lives in the U.S. and heads Mission Eurasia, a Tennessee-based group training young people to transform the countries of the former Soviet Union for Jesus Christ. Our vision at Mission Eurasia is to bring hope to society through young leaders and now bring the gospel to the next generation and to those living through difficult situations like in eastern Ukraine. Hundreds of Mission Eurasia leaders and volunteers recently crisscrossed the war zone and countries of the former Soviet Union delivering 120,000 Gift of Hope boxes to children. CBN News was there as dozens of youngsters met in this church basement to pack boxes. This is so exciting to see so many young people are working on this project. And this is just one of the packing and distribution locations. Several teams fanned out across towns and villages near the conflict zone, holding evangelistic outreaches geared to reaching young people, many hearing the gospel presentation for the very first time. I learned Jesus can help me in many difficult moments and help me not to give up. Each event ending with boxes of hope given to hundreds of children, each containing toys, school supplies, a Christian kids magazine called Spark, and a children's storybook Bible. Once the kids get back to their apartments, they're obviously excited about rummaging through their gifts and looking at all the various things that they got. Uh, incidentally, the Bible, along with the Spark magazine and each shoebox has this QR code uh, on the back so they can use their smartphone, scan the code, and within seconds, they will have access to all the various local churches that they can get plugged into. Canada-based ShareWord Global partnered with Mission Eurasia to distribute the Spark magazine and place QR codes on each box linked to a Bible app with loads of information for kids and parents. The Bible app includes uh, multiple languages in different translations of the Bible, and there's uh, over 200 languages that are in audio as well. Rakuba says every gift of hope box placed in a child's hands is a chance to introduce the love of Jesus and impact families in a war zone. The boxes symbolize the future with Christ, and when put into the hands of children, they take them home. They and their families will realize that there is hope in God, hope in Jesus. So you go to the border of Ukraine and Russia yeah. during, in January, right. the coldest time of year. Exactly. And boy, was that a great story, though. The, the it was, hope and, the, and they're reaching the right next generation. That's the most important part. Amen. Okay. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. From Washington, D.C., uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, Escalating fight. Jenna Browder, Knows his words carefully. Ben Kennedy, Plan to join him. And Amber Strong. For impeachment, grows a little bit louder. Bringing you the political news that matters. We get out and tell the story of the progress that we're making in this country. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6 on the CBN News Channel. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living, Tuesday night at 9.30. Hi, I'm Kevin Sorbo. 
and I want to tell you about a phenomenal book that I just read, 10 Laws for Success by Pat Robertson. See, I firmly believe it can transform your life and the, the lives of those that you care about. In this book, Pat shares the supernatural secrets he's discovered and shows you the way to a rich and fulfilling life. In the book, 10 Laws for Success, Pat shares biblical life principles that can put you on a path to purpose, fulfillment, and achievement. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to receive your own copy today. 10 Laws for Success. This dynamic book is a must read for anyone who wants to achieve their goals, build a solid financial foundation, and grow in their relationship with God. I highly recommend that you get your own copy of Pat Robertson's latest book, 10 Laws for Success. God bless you. From serving Syrian refugees to Ukrainians making Aliyah to Israel. Emily Jones reports from Jerusalem. Welcome to Jerusalem for this Inside Israel report, where we tell you what's happening in Israel and the Middle East. Well, some are calling it the worst humanitarian crisis in the world today. Nearly a million civilians are fleeing the fighting between Syrian forces of Bashar Assad, backed by Russia, and rebel Islamic groups backed by Turkish President Erdogan in the northeastern Syrian province of Idlib. The UN is sounding the alarm. Turning to Syria, we remain alarmed about the safety and protection of over 3 million civilians in Idlib and surrounding areas in Syria, as reports of airstrikes and shelling continue to take a heavy toll on the civilian population. Syrian President Assad is hoping to reclaim Idlib, one of the last outposts of rebel territory. Turkey is trying to stop Assad's advances and will not allow the hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees to cross its border. Millions of Syrians are caught in the crossfire with nowhere to go, and children are literally freezing to death in the winter cold. The exodus is the largest since the beginning of the Syrian civil war. The global coronavirus outbreak is being felt here in Israel, and authorities are doing everything they can to prevent casualties. Israel has canceled all flights to and from China and is requiring any Israelis who recently visited East Asia to be quarantined at home or special isolation centers. Our goal is to keep the health in the, of the Israeli citizens, and we will deal with any effect on the Israeli economy after we will deal with the coronavirus. Meanwhile, Israeli organizations like SmartAid are working to send masks and medical supplies to areas hit hardest in China. So far, the group has sent hundreds of thousands of pieces of protective gear to Wuhan and surrounding areas. More than 80,000 people have been infected worldwide, and over 2,800 people have died. Anti-Semitism is still a major issue today, especially in Eastern Europe. Many Jews are choosing to leave and coming to Israel. The International Fellowship of Christians and Jews recently brought 130 Ukrainian Jews to the Holy Land. And CBN News was there to witness this special moment. Many see the moment when these new immigrants step onto the tarmac here at Ben Gurion Airport as the time when the words of the Bible written thousands of years ago come to life. According to the Anti-Defamation League, nearly half of all Ukrainians hold deeply anti-Semitic views. Israel hopes to welcome thousands more Jews to the country this year. That's it for Inside Israel this week. We'll see you next time. Terrific. Thank you, Emily. Until next week. God bless you. And from all of us, see you next week.